Hello, I'm Roger Bisbee from the Skill Builder channel. And I'm Dan Cox from Essential Carpenter Tools. And we're here today, Dan's gonna demonstrate his brand new hinge jig. Let's uh, crack on, you use it, I'll ask you a few questions, yeah? Yep. So let's face it, Dan, there's nothing new about hinge jigs, is there? Well, not really. This is one that I made well over 10 years ago, but I'd like to think my new one has got a lot more benefits than this one. Yeah, well this one, I mean, it's one thing, it's heavy. Heavy. It's not adjustable, is no, it? No, no. And uh, it's quite hard to put in your van. It is, and it doesn't clamp to the door. Okay, so I'm dying to see what you've done <laughs> to improve on this. This is a standard kit for an imperial door. However, because these blocks slide up and down, a metric door is only about 40 mil bigger. So you can slide these down. So we're selling it as an imperial, any door you like. And the beauty of this system is, I know a guy's doing eight foot doors. And yeah. He, so with this, you get some more of these, you just keep adding it on, adding it on. You can move the blocks to wherever you want. Okay. And you can put the hinges wherever you want. And of course, the other thing is fire doors, because you don't put the hinge in the middle with a fire door, no. do you? So you move it up, yeah? Right, we can do fire doors, Roger, yes. You get a separate block, you slide this one off, you'll slide that one on, and then you put this one back. And that's 100 mil. So then you've got one hinge there. Ah, see, that's at the, the top. spacer. And then you have a 100 mil gap. Then you have another hinge at the top. Got it. So, so you've got two hinges near the top. Automatically gives you your spacing. Again, you can have these blocks wherever you like. You can yeah. slide them up and down the extrusion track wherever you want. Okay, so what's that bit of tape there for? So, Roger, I've put H and a bit of tape. That's where I'm going to hang it from. If that was a finished door, the last thing we want to do is get our pencil and... So, I just put a little bit of tape on there and then you can immediately see where you're hanging the door. And this is a four panel door, so four you want the door. big panel at the top. Or the upside down with a cat flap at the top as well. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, most of this, once it's set up, we can leave it set up. We can take the cramps out, undo two of them, pull it apart. You wouldn't really take it apart again, but obviously it's the first time I've ever set it up, so uh, it's a fun time setting it up. So the length of this hinge jig is worked out. So these blocks are 150, so although I've cut an inch off this door, that will be nine inches up from the bottom. So if we lock this off here, flush with the bottom, and they're gonna set it up for the hinge. We've got these little two mil offsets. So I'm going to put the hinge in there and just gently slide that up. Now you don't have to push it all the way up, just no, just touching it there. We can just tighten that and again just tighten it up. We haven't got to wrench it all the way home. And that's it set now. That's one hinge ready to go. Now on the middle one we've got our centre line. So I'm going to put the hinge in the middle of that and we can slide this one up to there. So I'm going to lock one off first, put the hinge in up to, to the offset, gently slide that up there. I can't understand where the allowance has been made for the guide bush. That is between, we've got two millimetres there. Oh, I see. And two millimetres on oh, that little. A little nib on yes. there. Yes. Oh, so we've got oh, a 16 yeah. mil guide bush, 12 mil cutter. Now, if you've got a radius hinge and you know the radius, yeah. if you had, say, a 15 mil cutter, 19 mil guide bush, that runs in there, as long as you've got two millimetres different. Got so it. that go yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. You see, the mistake I was making is I was thinking no. you put that in there and slide up the that, thing. You must go there. In between them two little... Got it. Two little nibs. I'll and I must them. say, um, me and Ralph fought a lot of these ideas and it was great working with him, but our good friend Julian helped us out on that. And when I showed him, he said, that's what you need to do. So that's Julian's nib. So that's Julian's idea. That's Julian's nib, is it? That's Julian's nib, yes. <laughs> yes, so his, many thanks to his him. His nibs. So, I mean, again, it's great working, Ralph, because we was battling ideas out, yeah, and then yeah. Julian said that. Yeah. So again, as I said earlier, these blocks, they can go wherever you like. They don't have to go there. So I'm just gonna do this hinge again, up there. Julian's nib there. And just, but just a little nip up on that. Now, once these are set, Generally, Most of the time you're going to you're, it. No, Yeah, you're not going to change them, yeah. unless you change your hinges, yeah. of course. Yeah. What if I want to use three inch hinges? Then we're going to get a different block, because what I've measured is the leaf on this one is 29 mil, because yeah. we're going to go up to there, and again, ah. these vary. So where you see, we've got it on 29. So if it's 30 mil on this leaf here, we just unscrew this, and again, once it's set up, you're pretty well going to leave it. So we take this out, if it's 30 mil leaf, 29, 
28 or 27. And if you've got so, a sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm just a little bit confused. Right, so that is deeper. It's deeper. So that will bring it forward further. out. Oh, okay. So, so when that comes forward, these you, you just slack, loosen them off. You yes. slacken yes. those off. Yes. So you bring it forward. So, got it. So we've got four settings for a four-inch hinge, and again, whatever you know, if it's 102 mil or 100, that doesn't matter. We've got four settings there, and then on a three-inch block, it starts at 19 mil, 20, 21, and 22. So I suppose if I was doing something smaller, I didn't want the three bars, I could just take one section and loosen you. Exactly, Roger. Just undo the, the Allen keys and just use one section. So if you was doing a one hinge, then just use the one section. So I don't want to pick holes in your design, Dan, because right, I okay. do respect what you've done, obviously, but uh, grub screws. I'm not a fan of grub screws because if I had a pound for every grub screw, I'd lost out of five quid by now. So what happens if I lose a grub screw? Um, I'm sure I'm going to speak to Ralph about putting an extra one in the pot. You get a nice little pot to put some of the goodies in. Oh, that so, little snuff pot. Yeah. yeah, great. So I'm sure that we could probably... Um, okay, a, then all I've got to do is remember to do them. But I suppose if you tighten it. them slightly in there, you're all right. But I do know yeah. from my rail system that I've lost the little grub screws from time to time. Yeah. So there's two things, right? One is that I've never seen a hinge jig that actually clamps to the door. So is that your... Um, we would like to think it's the first hinge jig that will clamp to a finished door. So you haven't got to screw oh, into yeah. it. If you've got to screw holes. Or those pins that you're Or them horrible bradles. Yeah. These can go wherever you want, depending on where you put the blocks. Ideally, perhaps between them two points. All you've got to do is just a little... You know, go, go crazy. You haven't got to go crazy with it. No, just a no. little nip up. The other thing that I really like is having this open aperture. Right. Because I've used the closed ones and I've taken it out and the router bit is still spinning. I've done it with a blooming worktop jig as well, you know? Yes, I have. Um, so I've always liked open aperture. And one of the reasons is once it's set up, you can leave it plunged down so you can go, and you'll see yeah. me soon, round there, come along carefully, up here, back on there, in. You haven't got to keep plunging up and down like the oh, others. So yeah. I've always, like the highlight was an open aperture rather than an enclosed one where it comes up. Yeah. You've got to put that on there, as you say, because when you lift this out, you're still setting your turret, are you, with the hinge? I will do, yes. The depth. I will get the yeah, depth at the moment, yeah. yes. Okay. So here we are, we're just about ready to go. Now, Dan, I've got to say that I'm nervous. Yeah, if I was using this for the first time on a nice door, finished door, I need to check everything's in place before I do exactly, it. Exactly, Roger. Once you've got this set up on the door, take it off, get a scrap piece of material, and just go up and down to make sure these are locked off at the right spot got it because the last thing i want to do is put the hinge in and it'd be a bit yeah bit so baggy. then you can try your hinge so, in it yeah so i'm going to try it in a minute i'm going to put it on a scrap piece of timber and just go up and down to make sure there will be people watching this video who go go oh, all that faffing about i would have had the door cut in and hung by now and i'd be off to yes, my I dinner know. yes so um i suppose this really comes into its own when you're doing a load of doors isn't it you're hanging when, every door in the house you're gonna fly through them. Exactly, if you're doing a new build, you've probably got a three bedroom house, you're looking at 12 doors or so as a guess. And once this is set up, and again, when we take this apart, what I'm gonna do is undo them two there, two round the back, pull that apart, take that off, and it's gonna go in its carry case. Mm. So the setting up time is actually reasonably a lot faster than what I've done today, yeah. because I'm setting it up for the first time. Yeah, yeah. Once you get used to it, it's yes, fast. Yes, yeah, it? so yeah. literally, take them out, that out. This will be coming out to go on the frame anyway. So it's yeah. just three sections. Once you put them together, I've been doing it for many years with jigs and it's just the fastest way. Right, is that the first one? It's like a glove in there, look at that. With the open aperture, I can leave the plunger set down. <laughs> the other behind the seat. <laughs> I'm going to knock the corners out. I just worked out what I can buy you for Christmas then. What's that, Rog? Corner chisel. Um, I've got one over there. <laughs> so 
So I need a new one. This one's I got this one. I lost my original one. You do uh, like them, and it's yeah. Do you no, like them or not? They're good, but that one's not very neat in the corners. See, look, this a corner chisel. Sorry, a corner chisel. Yeah. It's not. It's just not very neat. I don't think. Let's try it. That. It's it's like. Mm. So it needs to be sharpened, probably. Oh, okay, I'll do that. Like, I can do that while you're so, messing around. So for video purposes, I'm just going to use a chisel. When you put this on here, I didn't really twig what was happening. When you put that jig on the door, have you got to use a two-peak coin to space it out? No, on the jig we have got, I'm not sure if you noticed, at the top here, ah, yeah, yeah. there's this plate. Now this one's a three millimetre one. It's going to come with a two millimetre one. Why is that? Because two mils slightly better. But if you're doing fire doors, you've got intermittent bit of the intermittent, the, the intermittent strips. <laughs> it's easy for you to say. I know. And the, f the smoke screen ones, you need a three mil joint. Oh, okay. Or sometimes more. I've had it with Percos and quite a small room. The door shuts and because of the air it thrusts yeah, in, I it know. doesn't always shut properly on no, a Perco. No. So yeah. we've got the three mil, so that's going to be our spacer at the top. But we're going to do it so you can change it. It will come with a two mil and this is a three mil one. So you're just going to turn it. So when I put this in the frame, I'm going to twist it like that. Butt it up. So when you put it on here, just show me on here. So, so you just twist so that round. When it was on, on there, that's how you know where the length is. That is the location. So we twist that, pull yeah, that down, and it, it just okay, locates yeah. it on there. Yeah. And then when we're going to go and throw in it, we just twist that through there. I notice you don't use a hinge drill down. No, see, look, if I get the drill very slightly off centred about there, yeah. then when that screw goes in, it's going to pull the hinge, if anything, harder in. So, I mean, okay. them centre bits yeah. are very good. Yeah. When yeah I, I think I'd use the centre bit because I'm not. Don't trust myself, Dan. Not very good, is it? It's, it's been good. in the back of my van, Dan. That's what's happened there. I've got two questions here, Dan. First one is Do you never use a bearing cutter? Do you always use a guide bush? I always do, generally, yes. Um, the last time I used a bearing cutter, I've got my knees here. Um, one of these, you mean? Yeah. One of them. Um, I've done some stairs for someone. I made a template up using the, the bearing. Yeah. And then basically, I'd load it too much, and I wound up cutting into oh. the into the template that I've made. Is that is that absolutely precise? On yes, it's that flush. bearing is yeah. absolutely flush Dead on that flush. cover. But I kind of guess this is probably a cheap one, and once that wears, it's not going to get better. Is it? it's going to get more more yeah. baggy, yeah. and then more chance of of error. Okay. You can um, make like templates like exactly the same as the hinge and use one of them. No, sorry, what I'm saying is if I decided I didn't want to use a guide um, brush with your jig, can I use this or not? Probably not because of the little Julian's nib in it. Oh yeah, yeah. Because when it goes there, it would yes. just go round it, wouldn't yes. it? Yes. You'd finish yeah. up with two little bits. Of yeah. Well, it's only in the corner. Mm. Yeah, you could chisel that out. So you could yeah. do, but yeah. the other thing is the depths on this are set up to allow for the two mil offsets okay. on the 29, all the markings. So you're better off using a standard yes. guide bush. A guide bush. Making sure it's centered in the Making sure it's all nice and centered, yes. Round's a little bit misleading. What we really want is that shoulder line there yeah. to be in line with the door. Okay. So what I measured, so on the zero there, that from that line there is just under 30, see, it's like 20, yeah. yeah. They all vary a few mil. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure someone's yeah. gonna say, well, yeah. I've got one that's an odd size. Yeah, okay. But the other thing is, I can't help but notice these are big hinges for this door, aren't It they? is a little bit, yes. So what would you normally do, a three-inch hinge on you, this? You put a three-inch, but I've always liked big hinges. Just a bit more manly, aren't they? Yeah. Three-inch. Nice looks, bearing hinge yeah. as well, nice quality. Yeah, it's a nice... And that's become the norm, putting three on, hasn't it? Because people don't want Stop the... it bowing in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, that's something to say about modern doors, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, really? I mean, they're just egg box inside a lot of them now. Yeah. Um, they're really yeah. full of egg box. And so what's this solid pine? This, this is one? a solid pine one. It's not going anywhere. It's not going nowhere. When we had it on the door, we had these lining bars. Now, I'm just going to swap them back down that way, because they'll slide over. Like so. So they're out of our way. And I've twisted the three mil head one around as well. So that's all nicely in line. So that's going to go on now. So now that's in line, it's all flush. And that's going to be our three mil head joint. So now I'm going to put the jig in now. 
slide right up to the head, get it up there nice and tight. And I'm going to put a screw in now, and we're just going to screw it to the frame. What if this was a finished liner? If it was a finished liner, you could get a, a, a different cramp and go around there. But again, it depends on how wide the liner is. Oh, okay, so you clamp it on. So you can okay. clamp it on there. But this could be quite wide. Yeah. And a lot of the nicely finished liners that I've used have come in already made, pre-made with a pre-hung door. So the door set, basically. Pre, 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 door sets, yes. Okay. So that would work, wouldn't it? It would work, yes. But generally on the softwood, I was just going to screw it up. It gets the jig nice and tightly home back. Yeah. So then when we rat rat, we've got a consistent depth. Okay. I hope you don't think I'm trying to sabotage your product no, in favour of another if... product. Ooh. <laughs> so another comment I remember somebody made on your last video when you were introducing this jig is they said, is this one of those jigs, another one of those jigs that's only good for new build? Uh, well, we're going to get blocks to be made on there so it will go over a rebated frame. Oh, okay. So it will pack it out. Yeah. So if it's an existing frame, you could reuse it. But generally, I'll just use the same hinges, same size right. on an existing door. So if the door stop's already on there, the chances are it's already had a door on it. You've got the hinges got already cut yes. out. Just wang new ones in and the same place, hinge, yeah. yes. I'm going to start from the bottom and work up, because otherwise some of the dust or the sawdust that falls down has a bit of landing on these and it gets in the way a little bit. No signal in here because of the, all the cell attacks. No, no. Okay, Dan, well, I'm going to confess, I was a little bit nervous when I saw this because we've been talking about it for a long time and I thought, I hope it stands up to lives up to my expectations. I've got to say, it definitely does. But just because there was a lot to take in there, you can just run through the killer features for the viewers. Sure. So on the top here, we've got the plate that lines up the top of the door. This current one's three mil. It will come with a two millimeter one. So you've got the options, fire check, fire. fire doors, okay. and intermittent strip. So you can change that. Again, the blocks, you can put them wherever you want. You can move them. And with that part there, that will, nothing needed, put the hinge in, slide it up, and that's done now. And that's self-setting, yeah? Self, like, yeah, self-setting blocks, okay. basically. Okay. And then we're going to get the 100 mil block if you're doing fire doors. Right. Then it's the first system that we know with the clamp, so you can slide this um, anywhere along again. Yeah. So you can clamp it to so the finished door. door Self-clamping yeah. door. If you're only doing one hinge or two hinges, a small door under the stairs, cut down, you could just use two sections. Okay. And then you're there, one yeah. section. It folds down nicely. So with tool theft and everything, you can get it in the boot of a car if you haven't got a van. So you can hide it away. So you can basically. hide it away. And it goes in here. And it's going to go in this tube in a moment. Um, and you can keep adding to it for taller could, doors. So yeah? if it's a taller door, just buy one section of that. You put the pins in to add to that eight foot door. You can put the blocks wherever you want. One thing, I've got to say this. There'll be viewers out there go, how much, how much is this? So go and spill the beans, um, how much is it? I think at the moment for the basic setup that you got here, with the three clamps, all these parts, uh, roughly it's around 220. 220? 220. Okay. Um, well, there are cheaper ones on the market, but I guess that's the price you're paying for having it made in the UK. Yes, it's, um, it's made down in Dorset. Um, a lot of design thoughts gone into it and yeah precision precision so viewers will make up their own mind as always we're not trying to force no. anybody to do no. anything here but uh, if you do want to buy it 
follow the links. Setting it up was a little bit more involved because it's the first time it's ever been set up. But now to put it away, I'm going to undo one, two of them there. Gonna... Bring it over your shoulder and I'm off.